As loving and responsible cat owners, we do everything that we can to keep our pets safe and happy, to always make sure they are thriving. We strive to give them the very best life possible. However, even with the very best of intentions, tragedy can strike, and you can be left wishing you would have done more. In today's material, we will address the importance of assisted grooming, helping your cat remove loose fur balls and ridding your pet of those potentially harmful trouble spots. Engaging in the practice of assisted grooming, even just a few times per week, could potentially save your cat's life. Learning the basics of this practice, it could be, as a cat owner, the best thing you ever learn along the ownership journey. Today, I will offer up some important tips for grooming, pieces of advice, and I'll share my personal story of tragedy, a cautionary tale for others that I hope will ultimately be of great benefit to cat owners moving forward. Please watch this video. Save your cat's life. Stay tuned. Whether we're talking short hair or long, those fur balls are almost impossible to get around. If you have a cat anything shy of a hairless breed, there's going to be some loose fur. Of course, your ability to manage that loose fur. That's the most important aspect of this topic. There's a fine line between a casual and common fur ball and a full-blown health concern due to excessive shedding and potentially aggressive grooming. Cats, they do groom, of course, they spend the bulk of the day grooming. When you account for eating, drinking, sleeping, that grooming, playtime and those bathroom breaks, there's not much left in that 24-hour window. If you are a novice owner, it can be easy to slide into the trap of assumption when it comes to cats and grooming. I mean, you can see it happening, so it's just casual to brush it off and say, well, they really don't need my help. I mean, look, cat's taking care of itself. No worries for me. Certainly no need to assist right? It can happen. A passive response simply because a cat can self-groom. And believe me, it can be a trap. Because even if your cat is young, fit, and full of life, and fully capable of making sure no area is left untouched during a grooming session, the aftermath, any loose fur, it can cause a problem down the line. Getting clean and removing fur debris Unfortunately, it's not always the same thing. Fur balls can potentially pose a very serious danger, even a grave danger. And with that said, here are a few positive steps that you can take, relatively easy steps, that could save your cat's life. Assist your pet. I don't care if they are 2 or 22. A couple of times per week, groom your cat. Through the use of proper cat grooming tools, which are available at most retail outlets, a comb, fur collection glove, you name it. The use of these tools, putting them to good use and proper use, can save your cat from a potential choking or digestive hazard. Your pet swallowing loose fur is certainly not healthy. Next up, let's talk diet. You've probably seen it, and in fact many of you likely provide it to your pet. Proper food that is designed to push that loose fur through the digestive tract without issue. Wet food, dry food, even snack treats. Many brands have options that are furball control oriented. Just to be safe, make sure your cat's already healthy diet now features some measure of furball control. Another measure, and this pretty much holds hands with diet, and that is products designed strictly for hairball control. Not food, but rather oils and gels. Liquids specifically designed to get the job done. Once again, visit the retailer of your choice or contact your vet to inquire about this option, especially if your cat is long-haired and has a very long history of loose fur and fur consumption. And staying on the topic of special liquids and gels designed for the job, never overlook the power of water. Yes, that's right. Fresh, clean water. If your cat stays hydrated, they'll have a much better chance of keeping their system clean and pushing through and pushing out small amounts of fur that have been consumed. Once fur is inside, the objective is a clean passage. And while many cats do vomit after fur consumption, the main goal is a clean channel and positive and proper digestion. 
And the final piece of advice that I'll give today before I tell my personal ownership story about this topic, and that's general health. Stay on top of everything. If you're being mindful, being observant, taking no days off, nothing will creep up on you. Any changes in behavior, you'll notice. Lethargy, you'll notice. You won't be four days late to an issue because you never stopped being hands-on and observant. Understanding what qualifies as your cat's normal, your cat's baseline, it can help you immensely. If anything changes, you'll know to step into action. And those vet checkups, they are so vital. The ability to spot a problem, even prior to outward symptoms, it could be a true lifesaver. And now to my personal story. While I realize this topic could seem rather simple and quite basic, and the helpful tips I provided, although quite simple and basic, let me tell you, it's all a basic walk in the park until, of course, it's not. As I mentioned in my intro, as a cat owner, any pet owner for that matter, it can be easy to think that you're in total control, but it's only when trouble comes that you wish you'd been a bit more proactive and taken so many different steps. A few years ago, I was the proud owner of a cat named Frosty. He was about four years old at the time, at the time of this tragedy, but he entered my life just mere weeks after he was born. Quite the golden coat of long and thick fur. Very special cat. My funniest moments of him are watching figure skating, of all things, in the Winter Olympics. <laughs> the music and the movements. I think that was the first time he actually ever watched TV, or what I would call watching TV. It's the first time I ever noticed that he actually paid attention to it, and it's something I still remember to this day. Frosty was quite the grooming feline, even more than most cats, and that's really saying something. Golden fur, a bloom. <laughs> Golden fur all over the place. But he was fine. He was totally fine. He never had an issue. Until, of course, he did. One day he cried out in pain. It didn't last long, but he was yelling and yowling. He had a fur ball, and he was having a difficult time passing it. It finally came up. He threw up as cats often do, and that was sort of that, right? This scene, let's be honest, if you own a cat, you likely know this scene. Cats throw up a fur ball. I mean, on the surface, into an outside party, it's what cats do. They consume fur balls, and they throw them up. Here again, lulling myself into the mindset that, oh yeah, that's just what cats do. Frosty was fine, in fact. Months went by, no issues. Not even in the slightest. But then, one afternoon... That sound was back. That noise that I'd only heard once prior. It was Frosty screaming in pain. He yelled for about 25 seconds. I ran to get something for him in an effort to take urgent measures. But then he stopped crying. He was totally relaxed. Resting. From my vantage point, the event seemed over. He was probably scared, but he was calm. At that moment, I thought, this is about twice in five months now. Something is obviously wrong, and even if he's fine... This needs a closer look, a trip to the vet. As I approached Frosty, he didn't respond. He didn't move. In that moment, everything changed. He wasn't afraid, but he also wasn't calm or relaxed. However, the event was in fact over. It was over because the event had taken his life. Frosty was rushed to the vet, and the worst was confirmed. He was gone. It was a hairball, a furball. Although he didn't choke, at least not in the conventional sense. Sometime, it could have been any time, he consumed a furball, but... He couldn't digest it, and he couldn't pass it. The furball then came back up, but instead of vomiting, the furball, too large, got trapped in his throat. Roughly 30 seconds to a minute after that occurred, he passed away. Take it from me, this topic is serious, and even when you think you're on it and got it in control, that you are playing your role to the fullest, life can send you a curve ball from a pitcher that you've never faced. Furballs and fleas, I probably get those questions asked the most, the two most basic and common issues. If you were to make a list of the biggest concerns, those would likely be the top two or very near the top two. And let me tell you from personal experience, if you're thinking about grooming your cat, if you're thinking about it, just a quick 10-minute comb through, do it. If you're thinking about it, do it. Do it today. Do it right after this video. One more grooming session, possibly just an hour prior, could have very well saved Frosty's life, saving a life that I didn't even know was about to be in jeopardy, and certainly a life that I didn't know was about to be taken. It's human nature at times to fear the worst, but it's oftentimes those basics 
that get left behind. Assist your cat in grooming. Young feline, senior cat, they need your help. To the audience of Senior Cat Wellness, what are your thoughts and opinions regarding this topic of assisted grooming? What are the grooming tools that you like to use? A special comb, fur collection glove, any advice or fur removal suggestions? Please type them in that comment section below. Let's help the feline community and let's save a life today. That little tiny fur comb, that basic fur comb, the item you buy today could be the difference that you've never really knew that you needed. Once again, that comment section, as always, it's all yours. And if you enjoyed this content, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. I'd certainly love to have you as a member of the Senior Cat Wellness family. And until next time, thank you so very much for watching, and I will talk to you later.